the, the last talk of this uh, first session will be given by Dylan on flexible presentation of graded monads. Okay, um, thank you. So I'm gonna talk about some joint work with Shinya Katsumata, um, Tamo Wustulu, and Nick Wu. Um, and this is about computational effects. So I'll start with an example of a computational effect that we might want to model. So this is non-determinism with some cut operator. So here a computation is either just going to return some results, or it will make a choice between two computations, or it will fail to produce a result, so this is nullary non-deterministic choice, um, or it will cut. And the semantics here is that essentially, when we run such a thing, we'll just do a depth first traversal of the tree that represents the computation. Um, so this computation will produce 11, 12, 13, and, but then as soon as we see cuts, we just stop. So nothing to the right of the cuts will appear in the result. And there are some equations that we might want to consider between these computations. So for example, if we have x and y, and x we know somehow will definitely cut, then we'd expect um, a choice between x and y to be the same as just doing x. Um, so in particular, in, a, in an extensional model of these things, we would expect these two computations to be identified. Okay, so there's a nice story about modeling these presentations, um, about not modeling these effects. So, that, so in general, we can normally come up with some monad to model the effects. Um, this monad will often come from a presentation in terms of operations and equations. Um, and in fact, this presentation will often be sort of computationally natural in the sense that um, the operations do kind of computationally reasonable things. And each operation will give us some algebraic operations for, for the monad in the sense of plotkin and power. So this means essentially we get some natural transformation that enables to, us to actually um, interpret the, the constructs that cause the effect. So for example, there is this monad for interpreting non-determinism with cut. Um, we just say computation is essentially a list of results plus a tag that either says cut or no cut. This has some presentation in terms of free operations or fail and cut. Um, and then we get free algebraic operations for the monad, which we can use to actually interpret the non-deterministic choice plus this cut operation. Um, so this is a nice story about modeling effects. Um, it doesn't really allow us to talk about equations like this one where we say, you know, if we have some computation X that satisfies some side condition, in this case, um, definitely cuts. Um, so one way around this is to do grading. Um, the idea is that we assign a grade, so we have some collection of grades which kind of abstractly represent effects of computations. Um, in this example, we would have at least a grade bottom that says definitely cuts. And then we assign a grade to each computation. So in particular, the computation that just says cuts will get grade bottom. And now we can model these graded computations using a graded monad. Um, the idea is, well, these just look kind of similar to monads, except we split up the computations according to effects, according to grades. So a computation of grade E is just a list plus a tag, satisfying some type condition about the grade. So if the grade is bottom, then we have to say the tag must be cut. Um, and the graded monad has some other structure kind of analogous to the structure of an ordinary monad. So now the point is we want some kind of similar story to presentations and algebraic <coughs> operations in the case where we have grading. So we would like to say something like the graded monads we use to model effects have often have some presentation, some graded presentation. Um, these presentations are often computationally reasonable and they should give us some algebraic operations that we would use to interpret the constructs that cause the effects. So in particular, for this non-determinism example, we'd want to present this graded monad and get some kind of graded algebraic operations for all fail and cut. Um, and there's an existing notion of graded presentation, but the trouble is it doesn't really allow us to do examples like this. So to be clear, um, this graded monad has a presentation, a graded presentation, in the sense of the kind of existing, de existing definition of graded presentation. Um, but the presentation does not look like this. 
Um, and we cannot, present, we cannot present this graded monad in terms of our failing put. Uh, the reason is we want to say that if we do R of two computations and one of the grades is bottom, so one of the computations we know will cut, then the result should also cut. The, the grade of the result should also be bottom. Um, but the, the, the existing notion of graded presentation has this kind of uh, restriction that whenever we apply an operation, the grades of the inputs have to all, all be the same. So we cannot say if one of them has grade bottom, then the result has grade bottom. So the point of this work is to kind of remove this restriction and, gen and construct some more general notion of graded presentation that does allow us to present things like this in a natural way. So we define some notion of flexibly graded presentation, um, which generalizes the existing notion. Um, and in particular, every flexibly graded presentation gives a graded monad that is canonical in some way. Um, and moreover, some notion of flexibly graded algebraic operation um, for the monad, for the graded monad, for every operation inside the presentation. Um, and in particular, this will cover this non-determinism non -determinism example. And we get algebraic operations for non-deterministic choice. Okay, so in the last few minutes, I'll kind of say it in a bit more detail what these things look like. So in general, the general story about grading is you have some ordered monoid of grades usually. I won't say, I won't say why in any detail, but we have some collection of grades. Um, and then we define a notion of graded, flexibly graded presentation. Uh, one of these things is first a signature, sigma, which just specifies the operations we have. Um, and every operation gets a list of input grades, D prime, and an output grade, D. Then, for, then given a signature, we can generate some notion of term over the signature. Um, and then a presentation has a bunch of equations, which are just pairs of terms. So these would be the, ax the axioms of the presentation. So for example, in this non-determinism case, we take a bunch of grades in particular bottom, um, and we'd have a bunch of operations, in particular these R operations, which, which have kind of appropriate grades, um, and then various axioms, um, including this equation that I mentioned earlier that says, if X has grade bottom, that's this subscript here, so if X definitely cuts, then R of X and Y is the same as just doing X. So now, given such a flexibly graded presentation, we want, um, we want to kind of generate a graded monad and some algebraic operations. I will briefly mention sort of how this works. So firstly, every presentation has a notion of algebra, which consists of just some carrier plus interpretations of operations, satisfying the equations. Um, and then there is always some graded monad on set which satisfies some universal property stated in terms of these algebras. So there is some graded monad that comes with some functor that says um, every algebra of the presentation forms an algebra of the graded monad. Um, and this graded monad is the universal such thing. Then finally, we want, we want to construct these algebraic operations somehow. Um, this slightly um, this is slightly different from the ordinary story. So in the ordinary story, we would say algebras for the monad are in particular algebras for the presentation. And the interpretation of the operations in, the algebras, in these algebras gives us the algebraic operation. Um, that's not true in this graded case because algebras of the graded monad are not algebras of the presentation. Right, this, this functor that, goes, that takes algebras of the presentation to algebras of the monad of the graded monad is not invertible. Um, this turns out not to actually be a problem though because free algebras of the, mo of the graded monad are actually algebras of the presentation. Um, and, it, and these are actually the only ones that we need to construct some notion of algebraic operation. Um, so actually it turns out in a lot, for a lot of kind of natural computational effects we can come up with these flexibly graded presentations and get some nice algebraic operations to interpret these effects. Um, so it turns out, in fact, every graded monad that satisfies some co-limit preservation condition, this is kind of analogous to the um, finitary 
um, condition when you present finitary monads, every such graded monad has a presentation in this sense. So we can actually present all of the graded monads that we kind of care about. Um, so this is essentially an overview of the main results. Um, and that's it. Thanks. Questions? You have to help me on this one. Um, yeah, so I was wondering, um, so if here you are able to describe these graded moments, then as some kind of initial objects in a category, and you, yeah, you also talked already just about algebras. Uh, so would you be able also to um, characterize them as some kind of certain initial algebras on certain uh, end of functors for some maybe exotic categories? Or Well, I guess I guess the f the free ones in the sense that in the sense of having no equations should be initial algebras, right, of endo functors. Um, I'm pretty sure this would be true. Uh, they, they would not. I think they would not be initial. Well, I haven't thought about this too much, but I'm pretty sure something like this would be true. So there is some story about um, these graded monads actually being relative monads in some sense. And I think you can do something like this for relative monads. So there should be some way of doing this. Um, but I haven't really thought much about how this works. So I'm not entirely sure. OK, thanks. So what is a locally graded category? A locally graded category. Um, it's essentially like an ordinary category, except instead of having HOM sets, you have HOM graded sets, where a graded set is like a functor from grades to set. So in particular, you can talk about morphisms of grade E, where E is a grade. Ah, OK. And these have some composition rule that says, if you do something of grade E followed by something of grade E prime, you get something of grade E times E prime. Yeah, OK, um, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Any more questions? Stand? Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if this, there's any connection between this and some notion of subtyping? Or sub-affecting or subgrading or? In what sense? The okay. only thing that made me think of this was when you said uh, that the normal presentation requires um, the grades to match up. I wonder if yes. there's some sort of coercion that subtyping well, would give you that would correspond to this okay. flexible so grading. So one thing is, I would like to say that if either D1 or D2 is bottom, then this thing should be bottom. But so the restriction is like D1 and D2 have to be the same in the ordinary, so in the ordinary story. By subgrading, you can actually always make D1 and D2 be the same, just by increasing them. But then the problem is, you don't get bottom, right? Because you somehow like, forget that one of the computations will cut. So you don't learn that this final one will cut. So you can kind of do something there, but you... <laughs> but it doesn't help, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, one last question, maybe? Or not? Okay, so thanks, Dylan, for the talk.